G'day, it's Heath here from PickingLessons.com. In this guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at an intermediate Celtic fingerstyle arrangement of this great tune by the name of the Munster Cloak. In the last lesson, we looked at Lord Inchiquin, and that's Celtic fingerstyle as well, but it was a much harder arrangement to play. So this one is more of an intermediate level, so if you're enjoying the Celtic fingerstyle uh, type playing, this is a more accessible tune to learn. In a moment, we're going to take a look at the complete part A of the tune here in this lesson, but if you head on over to pickinglessons.com, you'll be able to get yourself a copy of the tablature that we're working from. You'll also find in the member section the second part of this lesson where we break down and have a look at part B. And you'll also find some play along tracks so you can have a listen and play along as you get to know the tune. So pickinglessons.com. Now, we are going to take a slow play through part A first, and then what we'll do is we'll break down the chords and the left hand positions and what we're doing in our right hand just to work out what we need to learn for the part A of this tune. Complete part A. One, two, three. Okay, so there's part A of the Munster Cloak. You'll notice that we're playing out of the open position, out of our G shapes. There's an A minor chord in there as well. Oh, we've got a D chord and we're working from a D7 position at the same time. So there are our chords. We are in the key of G. We're in a waltz time as well. So we're in three, four times. So you would have noticed my counting in, in the slow version. One, two, three. So one, two, three beats per bar, per measure. So we're in waltz time. Our finger picking is pretty straightforward in this arrangement. So we've got our thumb on the low bass notes for whichever chord we're playing. Our three fingers are being used there on multiple strings. There's a guide in the tablature, but very quickly over this G chord, we end up with the thumb, index, middle and ring fingers playing string six, string four, string three and string two. That's pretty consistent when we go to A minor we're going to use those same fingers, but our thumb will be on the bass note of the A chord, so the A string. Then the G chord up next, but with a B in the bass. And then when we hit the D7, our fingers will change slightly just to play the melody that actually attached to that chord. So we'll get to that in a moment. So just general thinking as we're approaching this tune, thumb is on our low bass notes, whether that's a, a G, an open A, or an open D perhaps. And our fingers are playing the strings, really following the melody, but we do pretty consistently follow the index, the middle and the ring on uh, string four, string three and string two. And occasionally, um, particularly in the second half of the tune, when we get to part B, we'll be looking at the top three strings with the same fingers. There is some melody work though, where we're gonna alternate our fingers, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's break it down and have a look at measure one. Measure one we have. So our melody, and the accompaniment to that. So we have part of the G chord supporting the melody, but together combined. So to play that simply, third finger on the uh, low G bass note there of the G chord, our second finger is gonna be the one used to hammer on to the A note there on fret two. And we're starting off with the thumb and the middle finger together. Middle fingers on the G string, thumbs on the low sixth string. Index finger to the fourth string. Back to that middle finger, and that's gonna give us a hammer on. So fingering wise, pinching with the thumb and the middle finger. Back to the index, to the middle finger, and the hammer on. These last two notes, we're gonna use our ring finger, back to the middle finger. For those final two open strings. So follow the guide in the tablature. Uh, I've got those traditional fingers in there. So I for index, M for middle, and A for your ring finger, the annular ring finger, A. And you'll also find a guide for your left hand fingering as well in this tablature too. All right, so measure one again, one more time. 
Moving on to measure two, we have this A minor chord. And fingering structure is pretty much the same. Talking about how we play the rhythm here, we're playing all eighth notes and our first finger is hammering on there on the uh, open B to the first fret. So one and two and three and. Measure three. Here in measure three, we're gonna take our second finger and put it on fret two there of string five. We're gonna hammer on with finger three there to the A note on fret two of string three. Then the little finger's gonna be needed there at the D note at the end of the measure. Hammering on. And then open to the little finger there on the third fret. Your fingering in the right hand, as I mentioned, there is a guide in the tablature, but you can choose your own fingers as you move through. There are times where different fingering options are gonna be okay. So the option that I've included in the tablature is, is merely one efficient way, and that's really what you want. You want it to be efficient and economical, but this is one way. Um, I do find myself doing it in different ways from what I've just put in the tablature as well. Uh, make sure that you're not just using one finger for everything, that'd be a little silly. Try and use two or three fingers as you go in your right hand, much more efficient. Moving on to measure four. Here we have this uh, two sixteenth notes, so uh, a T, tick a T, 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 T rhythm. Really, you can alternate your fingers here, your middle and your index on the melody notes. So middle, index, middle, index, does a, a, does a nice job there. And that pull off is quite quick in that first beat. One and a, or T ticka. T ticka, T, 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 or one and a, two and three and. Those last two notes there, the fourth fret, you could use your thumb twice on that fourth string, or you could go thumb, index. Either way is okay, whatever you're comfortable with, that will work. So, first four measures, first half of this A section here. The second half starts out in the same way. So let's skip now to the final two measures. In the final two measures, we have the D chord first. So really here, we're just holding a regular D chord, but our second finger is gonna hammer in onto that F sharp from the open E. So we get one and two, three and and our fingering here because we've moved to those top three strings uh, a thumb is on string four index middle and ring the a finger there in the tablature the ring finger on the one two three string so string three string two and string one so that's a nice exercise just to get those fingers happening there You can break down all of these measures in that way. You can work on measure one. Um, and you can work on measure two, you can work on measure three and so on. Just to get the fingering in your right hand really comfortable. One thing coming out of measure six into measure seven, out of the A minor, we gotta quickly switch our third finger because our third finger is on the last melody note of the A minor and the first melody note of the D chord in measure seven. So quick little change. So there'll be this slight break in the sound, but there's not much we can do about it to keep the fingering clean for each of those chords. It's very quick once you've practiced it, but that's okay. It's not too hard. Just really keep an eye on that third finger there from the A minor into the D. Okay, so finishing off now measure eight, we actually have the same melody as in measure four. Cool, so we've covered it all. So the first eight measures here of part A do repeat them, so we've got to play it twice. That'll give us the complete part A. So a couple of tips just as you're working on this one. Just remember those fingers, we're trying to use the three fingers and the thumb, and the thumb follows your bass notes of the chords, and your fingers will follow really the melody notes that are being played. You can practice each measure each chord just to get used to the right hand. So the G. Just getting used to the fingering and the A minor and, and so on, the D chord and, and so on. Uh, keep an eye on the rhythm. The rhythm's pretty straight, mainly eighth notes through here, watching the 16th notes in measure four and measure eight. 
T, ticker T, 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 T. Just keep an eye on that one with those pull-offs in there too. And the hammer-ons and pull-offs, if you are having trouble, work on them separately. So the first hammer-on in measure, uh, measure one. Measure two. So you can pull those out and practice them separately. But if you're having a go with this tune, you're probably okay with those um, slurs and those articulations already anyway. All right, so there's part A of this tune so far. If you head to pickandlessons.com, in the member section, we're gonna break down part B of this tune and learn that together. You'll also be able to get yourself a copy of the tablature that we've been working from. Remember, it's got your fingering in there for both your left and the right hands as you go. So pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.